Okay. In part two, I want to look at multiple charges in one dimension. I'm going to continue on with the problem we had before, where we have uh, two charges, one at the origin of two microcoulombs, one at 0 0.3 meters with negative five microcoulombs. And our next task is to place a charge of three microcoulombs such that the force uh, on the charge at the origin is equal to negative one newtons. Uh, negative uh, one newtons in the, uh, one newtons in the negative x direction. Okay, so we we'll first think about where this might be placed. This is now a positive charge, and we know that it uh, exerts a repulsive force on other uh, on the two microcoulomb charge. Uh, the same charges repel each other. And so we know that the the five negative five microcoulomb charge exerted a force in the positive x direction, and so now we want a force that's going to be larger and point in the negative x direction, such that the net force is negative. So where is that going to be? Well, since it is also a positive charge, it has to be in the positive x direction. So it has to be somewhere in here so that it exerts a repulsive force in the negative x. So where is it going to be? Well, we know that the negative 5 microcoulomb charge exerts a positive force, so the force that the new charge exerts must be greater. Uh, but it also has less charge than the the first one, the negative 5. So Coulomb's law says the the magnitude of the force is proportional to the charge, so at the same distance, this 3 microcoulomb charge is going to exert a smaller force. Well, it's also inversely proportional to the separation, so that means we can bring it closer so that it can exert a larger force on the charge at the origin. Okay, so now where does it need to be? And so well, let's call this some position x. Where does it need to be so that the net charge is negative uh, 1 newton? Okay, so our net uh, force then is, is superposition principle, the force of the uh, 3 microcoulomb charge, we'll give it a subscript 3, plus the force of the 5 microcoulomb charge, we'll give it a subscript 5, must equal to negative 1 newton i hat. Okay, so so what are these? So the the, the force from the 3 microcoulomb charge is going to have a magnitude equal to k uh, q3 times the q at the origin, Let's call that 2 for the 2 microcoulomb. And it has some separation between them squared. I'm all in one dimension, so I can just work with the x components. Or to say, I have magnitudes in the plus and the minus sign, tell me what direction the vector points. And since we know that this uh, force um, points in the negative x direction, I'm going to identify that direction with a minus sign. Or we could say this is the, the component, which lies in the negative x direction. Okay, so here, this we add to the force from the 5 Coulomb charge, which we already calculated in the previous part, which is 1 Newton. And that must equal the, uh, not really, get rid of our, I don't know, I'll include them. We know we're in SI units. Okay, and, uh, and that's equal to the resulting force, which is negative 1 Newton. Okay, so now this is just a, a vector sum. The vectors in one dimension may make sure I get my signs right, and now I can just go ahead and, and solve the the nine. So I have negative nine times ten to the nine, and then uh, three times ten to the minus six, times two times ten to the minus six, all over x squared equals two. Bring the one on the other side, negative. Two. So these become positive, and now it's just a matter of uh, uh, solving. Let's see, I bring the x squareds on the other side, a factor of 2 cancels. I get a 27, uh, 9 times 3, and then 10 to the 9 times 10 to the minus 12 gives me 10 to the minus 3 is equal to x squared. And if I, my calculator, tells me that that is 0 0.164 meters. 
Okay, and so uh, does that make sense? Well, I did, it is positive x, and it is at a position less than uh, 0.13, so that is where I expected it to be. So it's simple, uh, um, well, I don't, simple, a, uh, just one dimension, Coulomb's law, uh, we can calculate the magnitudes of all the forces just by knowing Coulomb's constant, the charges, and the, the distance between two charges. And then in one dimension, we keep track of the directions of the vectors with the minus signs themselves.